Looking to optimize your stream quality? If you've got a second PC and you use OBS, there's a free plugin that can get you from the left over to the right in no time. Let me show you how. So in order to use OBS on two machines, one to game, one to stream, you need one free plugin and it's called the new tech NDI integration to OBS studio 4.1.3. And here's a link that's going to be in the description, but just hit that red download. Now take the defaults, let the exe run finish. Boom. It's quick done. So after you download the plugin, restart OBS and then go into the settings before you actually enable the NDI plugin, you're going to need to make sure that you have what you want for a video setting. Now, for example, you don't actually want to do any sort of downscaling at this point. I just can't do this because I'm actually recording right now. But what you want to do is you want to keep the resolution the same on your gaming machine and the FPS be whatever you want it to be because of the hardware that I have, which again will be in the description you'll see that I should be able to do 1080p 60 FPS with no problems whatsoever. But just a reminder, you can't change these if you have that box checked. And the box I'm talking about is right up here in the tool. So under tools, we have a new plugin called NDI output settings. Now I can't check it because I'm actually recording right now, but all you have to do to make your gaming machine a source for another OBS setup is hit this little box and you hit that box keep the default name to obs you don't need another name because you're not going to have multiple sources out on your network running obs so just keep it as is doing okay and bam you're done there now the other setting that i wanted to show you is specific to the output and in here you've got a bit rate now normally with you know twitch and youtube and other streaming you don't have a huge bit rate but you do when you record so here we don't want the gaming machine to do any sort of encoding whatsoever. We want it to keep it as is and just shove it over to the stream PC. And by doing so in using a bit rate of say, like what I'm using is 50,000, it's essentially going to send everything right over without any sort of encoding whatsoever. So there's it's, it's low. This is the whole point of doing this is so the OBS on your gaming machine isn't doing much thinking. So you set it, forget it, and that's it. That's all you have to do on your gaming machine. Now, as far as what you want to grab from your gaming machine, in my case, I do gaming videos. So what I do is I only select sources related to my capture of my screen or the game or my mic. That's it. That's all that I send over. I don't send over any watermarks, any my webcam, any images, nothing, nothing whatsoever goes over except for the video and what you hear right now. Now we're done on the gaming machine. Let's go over to the streaming machine. Okay. Now we're at the stream machine, which if you haven't noticed, I don't have a mic for or at least not a good one. So bear with me on this one, but it's not going to take long. So now what you do is you download the same NDI plugin onto this machine, which stream machine again, you install it the same way. And then once you relaunch OBS, you'll be able to select NDI as a source. And you'll see down here in the sources, I already have it set up and it is as simple as selecting under the source name, the name of the source that you set up for the gaming machine, which in my case, I kept at the default of OBS. My machine name is Greg. There it is. That's all you have to set up. So now that I have the source and I have all those other things set up, a window, my alerts, follower name, a text box, banners, backgrounds, webcam, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to start turning those things on and show you from a layer perspective. Hello. That's where all my stuff's coming from. Bam. My follower name, follower text, banner, even my Jason background, all of it is right here. And all of it is running on the stream box. Now, last thing, all you have to do as far as setting this up as the actual stream box is the same that you would do if you were doing a standalone OBS. And what I mean by that is you go into settings, you go into your stream, you set up your Twitch and your stream key and all that kind of fun stuff. And then as far as output, this is where you set your bit rate 
and you set your CPU usage preset. And those, as far from a performance perspective, those are really the two things that you kind of mess around with. Uh, from the bit rate going anywhere from you know 3,500 up to you know five six k, especially considering they're both separate, you should be able to do that without issue. And uh, play around with you know the, the CPU usage, and you can actually use Task Manager to kind of gauge as you're kind of testing out doing your streams to see what the CPU looks like as you use these different settings. Because by default, I think it goes ultra fast or very fast, I can't remember, but you're not gonna need to go any more than like faster or maybe even fast. Uh, and it all depends on what kind of game you play. But anyway, though, we're not here to talk about that. We're talking about how you do it. And this is how you actually set it up. So again, quick recap, NDI plugin, you put it on a gaming machine with OBS, you put it on the streaming machine with OBS, your gaming machine only has your video, your mic, turn on the plugin, set it to like 50K and you know your highest resolution and FPS that you wanna use. On the stream side, you use the NDI plugin as a source after you install it, of course, and you have all of your other elements that you want in the stream as sources as well. And then lastly, you just set it up as the actual streaming machine. So I hope it's helpful. It, it helps me a lot. Uh, it was actually fairly straight. Oh, I forgot. Wow, how did I forget this? And I found this out the hard way. When I initially set this up and I had these two computers on the network and I set this up and, 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 it, and it worked, I got huge lag. I mean, ridiculous lag within OBS of the video. The audio was fine, the video. And the reason why is because I have a switch that I have these two computers connected to that is connected to my modem and goes to the wonderful internet. Well, that switch wasn't a gigabit switch. It was, I don't know, I think like 500 megabytes. I can't remember what it was, but it was not. It was, it was just a crappy ethernet switch, nothing fancy. It was really more of a hub than anything else. But anyway, the one thing to make sure is that if you're using any sort of switch with these any either of these computers, make sure it's a gigabit switch. And they're popular. I mean, I got it right at Best Buy. Uh, the one I got was a five port. I think it cost like 25 bucks or something. So it wasn't crazy. And I don't know how much of a difference it makes considering it's local, but go ahead and make sure that the, the network cables that you actually use are cat six or at least cat five E for speed purposes. But cat six, they're not that much more expensive. You're not going to regret it, especially if you want as much performance out of these machines. If you bought a second computer, you can afford two four foot cables or you know however long you need that are cat set so anyway off the soapbox i hope this helps let me know in the comments if you've tried this if you have any problems let me know and i'll try to help let me know your success stories and uh well in that case let me know what your channels are because i want to check them out i want to see i want to see what it looks like and uh well if you want i'll put my channel down below which i'm literally just starting but at least i've got the hardware set up so again thanks for watching hope it helps and good luck.